नमस्कार दोस्तों गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू फर्टिलिटी दोस्त वेलकम टू फर्टिलिटी दोस्त विद येट अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन एंड टुडे वी डिसाइडेड टू टॉक अबाउट फर्टिलिटी प्रिजर्वेशन वेन एवर वी एनकाउंटर अ कपल और यू कैन से अ फीमेल इन थर्टीज द वरीज इज ऑन हर माइंड अब क्या होगा वॉट नेक्स्ट बिकॉज कुछ हो नहीं रहा है इतने साल निकल गए हैं मैरिज को एंड सोसाइटी प्रेशर इज देयर फैमिली इज सेंग के वेन आर यू गोइंग टू टेल अस अबाउट सम गुड न्यूज कब कैसे है आर यू नॉट प्लानिंग वाई यू आर नॉट प्लानिंग सो एट दैट टाइम वेन वी एज अ फीमेल विजिट फर्टिलिटी सेंटर और एनी क्लिनिक देन द फर्स्ट थिंग डॉक्टर आस्क अबाउट वॉट इज योर एम एच लेवल वॉट इज योर एज any medical issues any medical concerns then we think ke oh ho kuch to galti ho gayi itne sare sawal aa gaye so at that very moment agar hum late ho chuke hain so one important aspect is why not to preserve your fertility when you are still at your younger side younger doesn't mean ke if you are visiting a fertility center at 35 plus you are old no is just because we are talking about in terms of your ovaries your reproductive system humse pehle shayad usko budhapa aa jata hai that's why nowadays fertility preservation is really very important topic and we can say that this is a kind of game changer when we are talking about fertility concerns so when we decide to talk about this very important social aspect social is liye ki kuch log abhi bhi ghabrate hain is baat ko discuss karne se then we just thought about a very senior doctor dr richa from mumbai yes viewers dr richa from mumbai from art fertility clinic she is with us now and aaj hum unse sab kuch puchhenge kya sach mein ek female ke liye fertility preserve karna important hai या मेल से भी हम इस बारे में डिस्कस कर सकते हैं तो लेट मी फर्स्ट कॉल हर ऑन द मेन स्क्रीन एंड जस्ट स्टार्ट विद द सेशन नमस्कार डॉक्टर वेलकम टू फर्टिलिटी दोस्त नमस्कार एंड वार्म वेलकम टू ऑल द व्यूअर्स हु आर अलोंग विद अस टुडे इन दिस सेशन so viewers today we have very senior doctor from mumbai from art fertility clinic and for this informative session art fertility clinic is our knowledge partner so dr richa is co medical director art fertility clinic mumbai and please viewers don't hesitate to ask anything about preservation aur hum uh ek what we can say that biased version nahi denge because we are going to discuss about male and female both uh she uh, is an established and renowned infertility specialist her focus has always been on ultrasound fertility medicine and genetic studies which is really very important aspect when we are seeking help in fertility field uh so uh dr richa what we heard about you from our community members is that uh, dr richa is a very focused doctor uh, she focused on uh, as an individual aisa nahi hai ki agar unhone ek ko ye plan samjhaya hai protocol samjhaya hai to yahi dusre ke liye hoga and this is what we gathered about uh, from our community about you and we are really honored to have you at our platform so once again welcome you doctor and let's start with the main session and fertility preservation so sabse pehle kya ye sach mein hum females ke liye hai ya males bhi isko kar sakte hai Um, सबसे पहले मैं एड्रेस करूंगी कि प्रिजर्वेशन क्यों फर्टिलिटी का हम क्या प्रिजर्व करते हैं जो चीज हमारे लिए प्रेशियस है जो हमें शायद आगे जाके ना मिले लेकिन हमें पता है कि हमें आगे जाके इसकी जरूरत पड़ने वाली है समथिंग दैट वी विल नीड अड वी प्रिजर्व इवन फ्रूट्स सीजनल वी नो इट्स गोइंग टू कम अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट सीजन बट वी स्टिल प्रिजर्व एंड कीप इट and we know that a woman's fertility is finite that means each woman is born with a fixed number of eggs and she will use up these eggs in a period of time and then if she is planning for fertility she is it's not that she will not conceive lekin ye bahut difficult ho jayega it will be an uphill task for that lady so why not take a, a action ahead of time and preserve fertility so that is the reason for women 
now men also you know it's much easier for men to preserve fertility but ye zaruri isliye hota hai kabhi kabhi suppose koi medical reason hai um somebody has been diagnosed with some form of cancers or some uh, other illness which will affect their uh, uh, fertility potential their sperm count आगे जाके हो सकता है कीमोथेरेपी की शुरुआत हो जिससे हमें पता है कि स्पर्म का काउंट बहुत अफेक्ट होता है कुछ समय के लिए डेफिनेटली धीरे धीरे स्पर्म काउंट रिकवर हो सकता है बिकॉज स्पर्म्स हर रोज बनते हैं बॉडी में लेकिन फिर भी हम इस चीज की गारंटी नहीं ले सकते हैं दैट स्पर्म काउंट विल रिकवर आफ्टर अ कीमोथेरेपी बिकॉज इट्स वेरी कीमोटैक गोनाडोटॉक्सिक सो फॉर मैन ऑल्सो इन दीज केसेस स्पर्म प्रिजर्वेशन बिफोर they commence the treatment is advised and it's a very simple task for men for women like always the route is little bit longer and little bit difficult as we all know that women find it more difficult to get through everything so for them the path is little bit longer but i think women can tackle difficult things better that's mm-hmm. why it's given to women to tackle it so they can also opt for fertility preservation and that is something we have to always keep in mind बायोलॉजिकल क्लॉक हमें लिमिट नहीं कर सकती है देर आर मल्टीपल थिंग्स दैट वी आर डूइंग वी आर डूइंग समर स्टडीज समीज इन देयर करियर देर इज स्पेसिफिक पॉइंट इन देयर करियर दे के नॉट टेक टाइम ऑफ फॉर फैमिली समबडी इज नॉट येट मैरिड हैज इन फाउंड द राइट पर्सन जस्ट बिकॉज दे शुड हैव चिल्ड्रेन एंड दे वॉन्ट चिल्ड्रेन डज इन मीन दे शुड गेट जस्ट गेट मैरिड टू एनी पर्सन विदाउट देयर चॉइस सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स लिमिट अस and that is why fertility preservation social fertility preservation that we call it which is done for social reasons not because of a medical reason it liberates a woman it gives her the choice back in her hand to preserve her fertility now and then opt for having children later on in her age time when she is focused on that when she has done her obligation to her own career to her other things uh, other commitments and now she wants to focus on fertility it may be too late if we go by the biological clock but agar unhone fertility preservation kiya hai eggs freeze kiye hain they have a very good chance of having a pregnancy at the age advanced age also like you said after 35 37 we may look young and fresh but our ovaries are aging and that's something we don't see and uh, that's why uh, in that age group which we call as advanced uh, age uh, fertility preservation is important for these women who have not decided to conceive when they are younger when that's the right time to conceive right uh, so doctor uh, we know that uh, fertility preservation or we can say that preservation of embryos is uh, really common nowadays but when we talk about unmarried female and when we talk about a female without partner then uh, she needs to preserve her eggs but there's some hedge or some doubt in the mind whether it is safe or not so what about the safety aspects when we are talking about egg preservation so it's for a woman who is not yet married uh, egg preservation is a very safe procedure it was declared to be uh, applicable and safe for women way back in 2012 and since then um, common public can avail of it uh, what it entails is similar to ivf treatment cycle half of it which means a woman after all thorough check up and uh, investigations and seeing that she's fit and healthy she undergoes a, a set of injections around 10 days of hormonal injection and then her eggs are ready and then with a small procedure which is a needle based procedure there's no full anesthesia there's no cut or anything we can get the eggs out which is like how we draw blood out from the veins we just give a prick and suck with a suction we can take blood out similarly we take the eggs out she may need to rest uh, for a day and she'll be up and around from the next day onwards she can continue her work she can continue her routine life and it's a very safe procedure until unless somebody has a risk factor like a medical condition in which case of course we have to be very careful but for an average healthy young woman this procedure does not have any kind of side effects or risk which are which should make the person fear that i should not get fertility preservation done in fact if somebody is on the wrong side of uh, 20s or early 30s and they know that they do not have a plan to have a, a partner or get married or have children now 
that is the right time for them to think about fertility preservation. If they freeze their eggs, the eggs will be, say, of a 32-year-old. And if, say, over the next uh, eight years, she decides to conceive, she's married, she has a partner, stable family life. And that's the time she wants to conceive. She's already uh, 38, 40. At that time, her own eggs will give her much lesser chance. But her frozen eggs, which were frozen way back at the age of 32, say, they will give her the same chances that a 32-year-old woman would have. So that actually is the game changer, as you have given a very apt title for this uh, program as well. Right. Uh, so, Doctor, another uh, query or uh, we can say that doubt. When we are going for this uh, egg retrieval process uh, for fertility preservation or pres uh, egg freezing, then uh, do we need any kind of uh, consent from our parents because since the female is unmarried or any papers need to be signed, any legal aspect in this process? So a woman who is an adult, she needs only her consent to undergo a procedure. But like with any surgical procedure, any procedure under small anesthesia also, we need an accompanying guardian with her. So any adult who can sign for her can come along with her. And the procedure is 10 minutes. The woman is in the hospital for two hours and then she can leave. It's a daycare procedure. So it's just for um, to have someone along with her to accompany her when she's going back that we need a guardian along and the consent of that person that they are looking after this woman who is in our clinic for today for a procedure. But for freezing their eggs per se, legally, they do not need consent of someone else in their family, their parents or anything. Their consent is sufficient. But as a guardian, somebody, some adult has to sign along with them. Okay, right. Uh, so I think if uh, young females in our session, we don't uh, mention young, females in our session, if you are thinking about this, please go ahead. It's a right choice. We can say the tagline should be right choice. So uh, next query we have uh, regarding the number of years. Because kuch logo ka kehna hai ki it's for 10 years and others say up 25 years tak rakh sakte ho. To actual mein hai kya? And uh, Dr. Richa, is this vary with a person who has medical conditions and the person without medical condition? To unka kuch farak hai timeline? Right. So there are two types of patients like you mentioned. There are some women who are doing it for social reason because they have not found the right partner. They don't have time for having a pregnancy right now. And they uh, want to still freeze their eggs. There's a second set of people who have a medical disorder. Hai. Uh, severe endometriosis, uh, um, cancers, needing chemotherapy. Uh, for these patients, they need before their treatment commences or before their egg reserve is depleted, they need to freeze their eggs so that they have that chance of fertility later on with their own biological uh, eggs. And that is why they need to freeze these eggs. Now we know that when they freeze their eggs, after that they will undergo treatment for that condition, that medical condition, say it is a cancer, say it is endometriosis. They will undergo a treatment, they will recover from them. After that, for any form of cancers, there's some amount of time that we give for the patient to see that they are completely in remission, that the disease has not come back. And after that, they will be able to plan their family, their fertility. So it is only reasonable that we allow them to freeze it for a longer time. Till some time back, this all in a conclusion. The new ART law which has come in, which we discussed last time in session with me, that it gives a couple a right to freeze their eggs uh, or their gametes for more than 10 years because this is done for fertility preservation. The whole idea is to preserve this for the future. So if we don't preserve it long term, then it fails us as a procedure. Then it is of no use. Right. So they can preserve it for a long term. But the only thing to understand here is as per the ART law, the last age limit for women to conceive or to avail of fertility procedures is 50 which means if she turns 50 of course after that she cannot use it so it's best to utilize your uh, frozen eggs embryos before you cross the eligible age for a fertility treatment okay right 
so if you are still in your 30s or we can say that late 30s so please do hurry up with this process because uske baad time thoda kam hai and again agar preservation karwana hai to ab kyun nahi rather than thinking about for this process for 2 3 more years uh doctor next we have a query related to uh people are doing this for medical issues and medical uh, fertility preservation for medical issues or medical concerns this is really common and at that stage we usually advise them to preserve embryos rather than preserving egg or sperm so if you have uh, some patient or some couple with you and the husband is staying abroad he is not available for regular cycles or conception period so at that time what you suggest like tab bhi aap embryo hi kahenge ya egg because uh, we have many couples uh, who are not uh, staying together husband is having job or this is mainly with army couples we can say so at that time at particular those time frame aap kya suggest karenge so it's a very pertinent question and usually like you said if somebody is married we would prefer to make the embryo and freeze because embryo is more sturdy more uh, stable and to freeze and to use later on but during covid we realized that people were stuck in different countries and they couldn't travel so the woman was here the husband was away in another country there was no way of crossing through the lockdown and that is when people realized that what to do and then we gave them an option see you still you are married but your husband is not here your age is uh, on the higher side your uh, ovarian reserve is low you have the option of freezing your eggs now and then when the lockdown opens when your husband can come down at that time we can plan the treatment cycle so for men it's like i said it's always easy they just have to deposit this sperm and that we do routinely for couples who are trying to have a pregnancy but we they know that they have come here to me today but their husband is traveling in say uh, 15 days time there's not sufficient time to plan it they will freeze couple of samples and go and we will be able to use you utilize those uh, samples um, in an effective manner to give them a uh, embryo which can be transferred in the woman's womb it's of course important to have the consent of both the partners at any point but taking a consent when the husband or the wife is long distance is not an issue because you can always have a teleconsultation you can send them the papers solve their queries after understanding the process they will sign the consent they will send it back to you so it's become easier for us we have learned a way of life during covid times which we didn't know that existed you know and it's able to help so many more couples uh, because they are away and they cannot be at the same place at the same time but that does not mean that they cannot have an option for planning their fertility so it has helped and these are the options that they can opt for definitely and when we talk about fertility preservation i know there are a lot of doubts in um, young women's minds and whether you know their family members are worried about them what will happen will it be safe and all the pertinent ans questions that you asked me i always tell them don't just think what you are reading is correct do not talk to your friends and think that that information is correct go to a specialist get the right information go to the valid websites gather information understand for yourself and then take a known decision so that you are aware of everything pros and cons and then you take a decision so it's always that you should think and then decide but when you start thinking you realize that this is a option which is easy which is doable it's not so difficult for me you know right uh, so uh, doctor just like a common question if i am uh, say in late 20s and i really want to uh, do this preservation for myself but i am still unaware of the facts or unaware of the test so what test basic test you suggest uh, right now so that we can just highlight uh, those in comments also afterwards that yes these are the basic test you just need to go through these test and you are ready for uh, a step further with this preservation process 
So what are the basic See, when tests? When a student tries to think about what should I do, whether I should for preserve fertility, whether I'm the right candidate to preserve fertility, the first thing they should think about is doing a blood test called anti-mullerian hormone or AMH. It is It measures all the eggs that are there in the ovary. It gives you a measure of your ovarian reserve. If you have your AMH and a ultrasound of the pelvis, these two tests are sufficient to tell you whether you are in a, can a candidate who should think about fertility preservation now or whether you have time to think and decide and take a decision after a couple of years. So at the age of, say, 28, if you are worried that you should think about it, you've seen your friends going through some situations and which have scared you, then don't worry too much. Get your AMH done. Get a pelvic ultrasound done. That will guide you. If the AMH is a very good value, you don't need to be worried. You don't need to go for fertility preservation immediately. You can wait for some time. You think the marriage is around the corner and you think it will be done by a couple of years. You don't really need to go for fertility preservation. On the other hand, somebody who's 34 and has no plans of marriage right now for any reasons that she chooses because women are empowered now. We can't really say that this is what the society wants. This is what you should do. Right. So at 34, she has, say, um, a training program that she is going to attend abroad. She's not here. She has after that commitment to work for, a, say, a company for a couple of years. She knows that she's going to be unavailable to plan fertility for the next three years. That's the right time. Get an AMH done, even if it is in the normal range. It's best for you to freeze your eggs at that point because we know that there is a sharp decline in fertility in Indian women, especially a little early after the age of 35 or 36, the fertility starts declining already. If you have frozen your oocytes before that, you have stumped the biological clock. You have been able to overcome it, you know. So that's, that's something that they should know that two tests, again, I'll repeat, AMH and a pelvic ultrasound. These two tests should be sufficient to give you some amount of information which you can discuss with your uh, specialist doctor to understand where do you stand in the fertility spectrum and how important it is for you to go for fertility preservation now. Right. And doctor, what about uh, males? Like uh, nowadays we are seeing many cases of male infertility on the rise and we have this working uh, pattern, quite different lifestyle. Everything body abusing is there. We are just having smoking has been increased. Alcohol is there. So if as a male, I want to check my fertility and I want to preserve that, then what should I do? Again, because the sperm formation continues throughout the life, throughout the life, if there's no life-threatening condition uh, like or something which will uh, damage the testis, you know, sometimes there's a surgery plan because of which the testis will be damaged. Sometimes we know that there's some form of cancer because of which they will need chemotherapy and that will damage the uh, testis and the sperm formation. For these patients, it's very important that they freeze their sperms. For others, if they are in a, they think that they have not been taking care of their health and that's going to affect fertility uh, chances, yes, of course, they can do a fertility check by doing a sperm test. But rather than freezing their sperms, I would advise them to change their lifestyles. You know, men um, are blessed with the thing that they do not undergo um, andropause like women undergo menopause. Right, their fertility is continuous, it's not finite. So they still have time to change their uh, lifestyle, to change their patterns of uh, taking care of themselves and still ensure that they will have a good outcome, good fertility. But then sometimes we see men with a fertility uh, count of um, sperm count, which is going down slowly. They're not yet married. They're not uh, planning for a fertility right now. But the sperm count is low and is going down. And we know that we will not be able to always control this trend. For a person with normal sperm count, it doesn't matter. But somebody mm -hmm. who already has a low sperm count, it's a good idea to freeze a couple of samples because we know with time in such men, the fertility count will go down, the sperm count will go down. And then frozen sperms can still be used for them to have a, biologically their own children. Uh, we have many queries related to this. Does male fertility is affected with age? 
So as, as age increases, there's some amount of wear and tear. So a, a person who is at the age of 70 will have probably worse quality of sperm than somebody who is at 30, but they will still be producing sperm. Sperm production doesn't stop at the age of 45 or 50 like it does in women. Sperm production continues, but with age, the quality of sperm declines and hence the chances of having pregnancy declines. They also have more abnormal sperms form as we uh, as men age, and that is why the chances of pregnancy will decline, or there might be some chances of having abnormal children when the sperm parameters are very, very poor. But age does not impact men as much as age impacts women. Right. Uh, next query we have is there a difference between gynec and fertility doctors and if I am thinking of preserving my eggs as I really want to study more then what you suggest should I visit normal gynec or should I seek a help from fertility doctor so a gynecologist uh, effectively is a is a doctor who is uh, trained in women's health and uh, they will be look able to look after all your gynecology needs. But after we do gynecology, when we are fertility specialists, we do more training, advanced training only in fertility management. So of course, the level of expertise will be different and uh, focus is different. If you want to check uh, whether you fall in the right category to preserve your eggs, the basic thing you can do is do an AMH uh, check your uh, get your ultrasound done and by all means meet your gynecologist but don't stop there if you don't get the right answers because you know you have some place where you will get more focused more detailed more uh, objective answers because that person is a specialist they have done specific courses they have studied it they have uh, more experience dealing with a certain type of patients only uh, right. So next we have what are the initial symptoms of infertility? Uh, when to see the doctor if I really want to preserve my fertility? So one, two things I will separate. One is low AMH or having less uh, eggs. You know, uh, most of the diseases have some symptoms like the your viewer just asked. If you have an infection, you will have fever. If you have bones weak, you will have bone pains. But when you have low AMH, you will have no symptoms. So women will be completely unaware that they are dealing with an issue which is out of their control. They have not willed it. They have not caused it to happen. And they do not have any symptoms that will tell them or put up some red flags that, OK, now you need to see a doctor. The only thing you could note perceptibly is shorter menstrual cycles. So instead of 28 day or 30 day cycle, if you have a 22 day cycle or it's getting shorter, you know that the egg reserve is going down. So that is something for low egg reserve. Now, infertility again has no symptoms other than the fact that you are unable to conceive. And if you have been trying for one year in your fertile period, which is important to know, because I've seen couple who have not tried during the fertile period. They did not know about which is the right time for them to conceive. And they land up in the clinic asking whether they need a fertility treatment. Not everybody who comes to my clinic needs a fertility treatment like an IVF. Some of them have just some abnormal hormones, some levels which are not correct. They do not know their fertility time period. And once we guide them with that, they will be able to conceive. But if you have tried for a year in your fertile period and you have not been able to conceive, then we say strongly that you should visit a doctor. You should visit a fertility consultant. But again, this doesn't apply to all the ages. Say a woman who's 36 and she's been married for one, uh, she's been married now or for some time. I wouldn't ask her to wait for a year and then come to me. Or say somebody who gets married at the age of 38, I wouldn't ask them to wait for a year and then come to me because by that time she would have lost the best potential that she had to conceive. So if you are young, you can definitely wait for a year to see whether naturally things are working out. If you are on the higher side of uh, you know, on the wrong side of 30s, then visit your doctor early just to make sure that everything is working fine. Things are OK and you don't need to worry about anything. It reassures you so that you can plan things ahead then properly. 
Right. So we can say that please don't wait for symptoms to appear. Uh, just um, gut feeling. There will be no them. symptoms. There will be no symptoms. Like I said, mm -hmm. you know, it's a silent thing. It's happening in the background. And you with all the noise of daily routine and work and household, we cannot hear that noise. Sometimes women are not right. even aware that they have irregular menses because they have not been listening to their own bodies. They have no time for themselves being so busy looking after everybody in the family. Right. So I think all females in this session and even males, please do take care of your partner. And if you are single, then we would suggest that please do take care of yourself. You will not encounter any symptoms or yeah, any alarm bell will ring. Ki, nahi, nahi, ab jaldi jao. Fertility center jana hai. So please apna dhyan khud rakhye. And if you are in Mumbai, you can meet doctor at ART Fertility Clinics. And if you are anywhere in India, uh, ART Fertility Clinics have many centers all over India. You just message her or uh, you can uh, message on the number given in the comment box and just fix the appointment, meet the doctor and check with the doctor that if you are still at the right age of preservation or you really need some advanced treatment. So don't worry, just work on your body, work, don't uh, check those particular symptoms. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Richard. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's really important to know about our body, our fertility. And this is really uh, I think a kind of thing we can say that nahi koi tumhe batane nahi aane wala ki ab tumhe kya karna hai. Just take care of yourself as you are taking care of your outer body outlook. Take care of your reproductive system also. It is really important. Doctor, one any thing I would like to yes, yeah, one thing please. I would like to comment is when mm -hmm. a, a woman or a man is dealing with the, a serious disease like cancer. Mm -hmm. Their focus is different, you know. They're already dealing with a life-threatening condition. They know that they're going to be exorbitant cost trying to overcome that and fight that cancer. And at that point, fertility is not in their mind. Believe me, it's not in their mind, you know. They cannot think about it at that point. Uh, their parents cannot think about it. Their extended family cannot think about it because they feel, first, let me save my child and then I will think whether they can have children or not. But the good thing to know is that oncology treatments are so effective now and the science has progressed so much that a lot of these patients will recover completely and have a healthy life. When they have a healthy life ahead, then they will need quality of life. And when they will talk of good quality of life, at that time, the question will come how to have a pregnancy, how to have a complete family, and that time, the questions that you asked me, I will have no answers because that, that time zone where we could have done something is gone. So more and more oncologists, oncosurgeons, breast surgeons are being encouraged to discuss this option with their patients mm -hmm. when they are diagnosed uh, with a cancer which needs chemotherapy. The couple should know that they have an option of thinking about fertility preservation. It is not going to impact their cancer treatment. It's not going to impact their outcomes after cancer treatment. It only gives them something to fall back on after the cancer treatment is done and after they have recovered to help them build their own families. In fact, most of the doctors will give this option to patients who they know will recover well. So if mm -hmm. your oncologist is suggesting you fertility preservation, they already know that you are a good candidate to completely recover and be completely healthy. So take it as a positive. Do not take it as a negative. Take it as a positive. It will probably need a 12 to 14 days of your time before your uh, cancer treatment starts. So most of the patients, say for breast cancer, they are diagnosed. They come to me. They can have one cycle in 12 to 15 days. Very quickly, we freeze some eggs. They go through a surgery. After the surgery, they come back for. They can come back for a second cycle. Because after surgery, the doctors will post, uh, post start their chemotherapy in, say, 15 to 20 days after the report of the surgery has come. Right. You know, So they have these windows where we can very easily start the treatment, preserve their eggs. And nowadays, we have protocols which keep all their hormones low. And so it does not increase the risk 
for patient at all. It does not delay your oncology treatment at all. The only thing is that it, of course, is an expensive treatment. It will cost you something. But then that cost, if you think about that, it leads you to have a biological child. It kind of negates all the things that you have been thinking against fertility preservation. So it's very important that we increase this awareness amongst patients who've been diagnosed with cancers. That look, guys, you have a window of preserving your eggs now. Once the chemotherapy has acted, the eggs will be destroyed. And because we don't grow any new eggs, we will not be able to come back to the same potential of fertility that you have. Most right. women will start having menses, but they will not be fertile. That's a different concept altogether because their AMH would have dropped much below the fertile level needed for a pregnancy. So it's important to know that you have a window, you can utilize it. If you choose after understanding everything not to go for it, of course, it's a couple's choice, but at least you won't have the regret later on that I was not aware of this. Then you know that I had the option, I was given the choice and I have knowingly not taken that choice. Right. So when whenever you are reading or checking Google for other things, please do check for this awareness thing also. We wish you all the best that you don't have to do any treatment. Your health, your life will always be good. But again, we don't know every If you have any issues, any concerns, please do check with your doctor. And fertility preservation is really the bestest option nowadays we, we have, whether it is for medical issues, medical concerns, or it's a social thing. Please go ahead and don't hesitate. And if you have really any queries or you want to meet the doctor, please let us know. Or just uh, we have the number posted in comment box. Just connect with us. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for joining today and giving us such a wonderful insight about fertility preservation. Thank you. Thank you.